19 inches of torrential rains falling in 60 hours over six northeast states bring about the worst flood disaster in recorded American history. Already drenched by the downpour accompanying Hurricane Connie a week previous, swollen streams run amok through one of the most populous and industrial sections of the nation. Pennsylvania, part of New York and New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts and Rhode Island have been designated disaster areas by the president who is en route to inspect the damage and meet with the governors of the affected states. An estimated 35,000 are homeless, with hundreds of residences a complete loss. Countless manufacturing plants have been damaged beyond repair, throwing thousands out of work. Production comes to a complete standstill. Transportation is equally paralyzed for roads and rail lines serving millions. It is estimated that weeks and in some cases months will be required to bring communications back to normal. Railroad roadbeds have been literally washed out, leaving twisted tracks hanging in air. Hundreds of bridges must be replaced. As the magnitude of the disaster begins to unfold, estimates of damage continue to rise. Already they have reached billions. And in the wake of the swirling waters comes the danger of looting. The military stand guard as the dispossessed search through sodden wreckage for something to salvage. There lurks in the mud of destruction the specter of epidemic disease. Drinking water must be sterilized, and thousands are inoculated against typhoid. No estimate has been made of the thousands of cars that will be a total loss to the floodwaters. But the tragedy has struck most deeply in the scores of small towns, such as Naugatuck, Rhode Island, and Ansonia, Connecticut, which have been virtually destroyed with a loss of life that now exceeds 200. Throughout the flood area, scores are missing and the grim death toll may go higher. Truly, not only the Northeast has been devastated, but the nation has been struck a staggering blow. Showdown in Morocco and Algeria. Heavily reinforced troops pour into the French colonies as riots turn into full-scale rebellion throughout the land. Already two French divisions, formerly part of NATO, institute martial law and round up natives from outlying desert villages as well as the cities. Hit and run clashes with the military result in the wounding of thousands, while in two days of pitched battles, a thousand die as the revolt spreads through North Africa. Casualties mount as the tide of battle shifts to Algeria. In one action, more than 600 tribesmen are rounded up, swelling the ranks of prisoners to 5,000, and terrorist raids continue to increase. The unpopularity of French-appointed native rulers is partially blamed for the violence of the uprisings which threaten the government of Prime Minister Edgar Faure. Scores of towns have been sacked and put to the torch by raiding Berbers, swooping from desert and mountain fastnesses. And the end is not yet as France digs in for a finish fight. David Eisenhower, golfer and man about Colorado, steals the spotlight from his vacationing grandfather, President Eisenhower, as he displays a swing that has the chief executive grinning with satisfaction. Seven-year-old David also gets an indoctrination course from his famous grandfather as he learns the fine art of dry fly casting from an acknowledged expert. David also plays host to the junior set. Even though Grandpa is president of these United States, this is David's day and he's savoring every minute. Britain introduces something radically new in aeronautics, the flying mattress, or balloonoplane, as the inventor prefers to call it. Powered by a light 65-horsepower motor, it gets its lift from a wing-shaped gas bag. Cheap to produce, it's visualized as an aerial flivver, startling in appearance, but just about foolproof from the pilot's point of view. On the ground, the wings can be deflated and the contraption shoved neatly into the garage. And there you are. No problems at all. Only, if you get a puncture at 4,000 feet, what do you do then? 